Welcome to the ultimate vision large language model showdown. Today, we're pushing the boundaries of what large language models can do with the challenge that separates the contenders from the pretenders. We have the commercial heavyweights, OpenAI's GPT-4.0, 4.0 or Mini and O1, Anthropic's 3.5 Sonnet, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and the challenges from the open source world, Mistral's latest Mistral Small, Quent's cutting edge models, uh, 72B and the 32B, the challenge is PDF to HTML conversion with perfection. These models face a formidable task, transforming complex information-dense PDF pages into flawless HTML without losing a single detail. This isn't just text extraction. It's about preserving layouts, tables, figures, and formatting that make financial and technical documents so challenging to process. Where it is so critical to ensure that the HTML is 100% faithful to the original document. Numbers and measurements are not misrepresented and accuracy is paramount. I've invested a considerable amount of time and resources testing these models to their limits. Processing documents like this page from Apple's 2024 earnings report showing detailed cash flow statements. Will any model achieve 100% accuracy? Can the open source challengers outperform their commercial counterparts? The results might surprise you. Let's dive into this comprehensive analysis of what these cutting edge AI systems can really do when pushed to their limits. Before we continue, I would like to ask you for a favor. As you can see, we are a very new channel with a small number of subscribers. So if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing. It costs you nothing and it helps us grow. Also, check out our website, promptchitty.com. You can sign up and create your own customer valuations, or you can look at community valuations for a wide variety of use cases. We have published hundreds of evaluations and are releasing more every week. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, please let it be that you should be testing your own prompts with your own data to see what works best for your use case. Trump Judy helps you do just that. Now, back to the video. So let's talk about this test. This is probably the most challenging task for vision language models. We have complex tables with hierarchical rows and root columns. We have infographics that we have textual information that we want to convert to HTML. And not just any HTML, but HTML that can be used by text-only models for inference. It is very easy to make HTML using absolute positioning to match the original document. But this is not what we want. We want the HTML that can be used by text-only models for inference. And that's not what you get with absolute positioning. The HTML is not semantic and the text-only models have a hard time using it for inference. We want HTML that's 100% faithful to the original document, but also semantic and usable by text-only models for inference. Let me show you what I mean. So let's start with this document that I used for this test. This is the Apple 2024 earnings report uh, cash flow statement. As you can see, it's a complex table with hierarchical rows and group columns. Now, let me show you what absolute positioning HTML looks like. Clearly, this is not semantic and the text only models are going to have a very hard time using it for inference. Now, let's look at the HTML that's 100% faithful to the original document, but is also semantic and usable by text only models for inference. As you can see, this is much more palatable format for the text only models to use for inference. Similarly, I also wanted to show you these other documents. For example, this is the Berkshire Hathaway 2024 report. And uh, this is what the corresponding HTML looks like. Same for the China National Petroleum Corporation annual report. Um, it has a table and infographics. This is a similar set of complex financial tables from the Google annual report. This is the same for NVIDIA. This is, now this is an interesting one. This is a historical timeline that, and we want to visually represent this information in, in text, which as you can imagine is quite challenging. This is, a, uh, this is also a complex page from the Toyota document. And uh, there are a couple of pages from the Toyota document that are very information dense. And as you can see, they can be very challenging to get completely transformed into semantic HTML. And finally, this is the annual report from uh, Volkswagen. 
For each of these, I made HTML versions while ensuring that the HTML is 100% faithful to the original document. But clearly, the structure of the HTML might not match exactly what the original document uh, the original document, but it's 100% faithful to the original content. This HTML is what I consider to be rad friendly HTML. Unlike typical PDF to HTML converters, this HTML does not rely on absolute positioning for a pixel to pixel match. Instead, it uses semantic HTML tags to structure the content in a way that it can be used by text only models for inference while retaining and being 100% faithful to the content of the original page. When integrating large language models with complex documents like the ones here, you have two fundamental approaches. The first approach is text extraction during ingestion. In this approach, you convert the documents to text once during the pre-processing phase, and then you use this extracted text for all subsequent RAG operations. And the second option is image-based processing and inference. In this approach, you pass the document page images directly to the model during each inference call. The second method I have extensively tested in previous videos on my channel. For this benchmark, however, I'm focusing specifically on the first approach, optimizing document to text conversion, specifically document to HTML conversion during ingestion. Given the complexity of the multi-level tables and the structure of financial data in our test documents, the standard text or markdown formats are inadequate to, for preserving information integrity. HTML is an optimal format to maintain the structural and semantic relationships between these documents, particularly for the intricate financial tables like this Apple's earnings statement with all of its hierarchical, hierarchical rows and group columns. Let me show you the prompt that I'm using for this task. So in the prompt, we, ta we, we tell the model, you are an OCR expert. Your task is to create clean HTML from the provided image only. And then we give it some guidelines. Only use the text that exists in the source image. Do not add any heading, sections, so on and so forth. Maintain the same exact wording and preserve all numbers, units, and measurements. For table structures, we give it a little bit more guidelines. We want the border so it's visually clear. Uh, we want the TH, TR, and TD. Um, and then we also have specifically for hierarchical rows, there are instructions on how to handle them. We, ex we explicitly ask the model to not put in any styling attributes. Uh, we only want structure and semantic attributes. Uh, we do not want to include any JavaScript or any animations because essentially the consumer of this is another large language model, uh, which is not vision based. And then we want to keep the stru structure simple. And this is important. We want to maintain the row spans and call spans. And then for image transcriptions, for things like charts, we want to see if we can take the information from that image and make a table out of it. If you cannot make a table, we just ask it to print out the text of the chart. And then we have some additional instructions around how to handle the overall document structure. It's very important that we don't have any text in the generated HTML that does not exist in the source image. And then we give it an example of what, what, what the output is supposed to look like. All right. So the moment you all have been waiting for, the results. The clear winner here is Claude 3.5 Sonnet. However, Quen is right behind. What I find absolutely fascinating, though, is how badly OpenAI has done here. Now, I should add that the scoring criteria that we have is very strict. We have zero tolerance for hallucinations. If the model gets even a single number wrong, it gets a score of zero. This is a requirement from our customers in the financial domain. You clearly cannot be misrepresenting numbers from a cash flow statement. There is very little margin for error here. What is amazing is right behind Claude, there is Quen. And Quen has beaten Gemini and is within striking distance of Claude. Mistral has also done very well. I have to give it to Mistral and Quen. They're really pushing the OSS frontier here. Now, I do think this is a very difficult task for any model. And we know for a fact models do much better when you pass in an image at inference time and ask it a question.
So I think this is just the models being terrible at making HTML that can adequately represent the nuances of the PDF format. I'm not going to go through all the mistakes of all the models here. There are just way too many. But here are some mistakes I do want to point out. Let me start with GPT-40 Mini and look at this mistake it made. So this is the Apple cash flow statement. And there are several mismatches in the numbers in the row structure. For example, for the vendor non-trade receivables, the value is 1365 in the actual response versus 1356 in the expected response. So also the proceeds from sales of marketable securities is 13135 instead of 11135. And the proceeds from issuance of term debt shows 5228. And I think it's missing the negative. And the repayments of debt uh, for September 2023 is negative 11,511, where it says negative 11,151, right? Uh, and the investing activities in the section merges two rows into one. So again, you know, this misrepresentation of numbers is an absolute non-starter. Let me show a similar mistake uh, from GPT-40. So here it says, repurchases of common stock is mismatched. The expected value for September 30, 2023 is 77,550 instead of 77,520. And what's interesting is um, Sonnet that hasn't made these mistakes. Uh, Quen also hasn't made these mistakes. And then one more I wanted to show you is where even Sonnet hallucinates. Even though, as you can see, uh, even though it has the top score, it still provides incorrect information. The actual response is missing multiple required facts and leaks from the expected response. It omits all the electrification rates tables and their associated power trade percentages. And there are several numerical mismatches. And this is Sonnet, by the way. In the Japan sales series, it's the expected number for Yaris is 184 and the actual is 194. And NOAA is supposed to be 88, where it says actual 68. And in addition, Asia, including China and other tables, do not match the expected row to labels and numbers. So what are your thoughts on these results? Is this a fair test? Are we ever going to see 2020 vision for PDF to HTML conversion? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, and I'll see you again in the next video.